Hello, everybody. My name is Eric Leichtenschlag from the AdMob SDK Developer Relations team here at Google. And I'm here today to talk to you about uh, AdMob mediation and more specifically custom events and their use cases and how you can use them. So first off, you guys might be wondering, what are custom events? A uh, custom event is a mechanism used to execute some custom code in your app uh, that can serve a view into the ad space instead of just showing an ad from a normal ad network. Uh, this could be an ad from uh, a network that's not supported by mediation or any other custom view that, that you put in. So why would you use it? Um, if you want to incorporate an ad network that doesn't have an AdMob mediation adapter, uh, then you could write your own custom event uh, to, serve, to serve that network. And you could also show some custom view instead of an ad. So let's walk through how you can set up this custom event and write your own code uh, to serve this custom view. So the first thing you want to do is in your AdMob uh, settings, in your mediation placement, you'll want to add a custom event. And the custom event has three properties, uh, a label, a class name, and a parameter. Uh, the label is just a name for your custom event. So in this example, we called it AdMob custom event. Uh, the class name is your fully qualified uh, class path to the custom class you're going to write. In this case, it could be your .package .custom add. And the parameter is just some parameter that you will need uh, in your app to, to make the request or to get, get this ad or this custom view that you want to show. Um, and we'll walk some through examples later um, of how you would use this. Um, and then in your app, you would create this class, that your.package.customAd class. Uh, and that class would implement the custom event banner interface. Uh, this interface has two methods, uh, request banner add and a destroy method. Uh, the main one is request banner add. Uh, and in this method, you will take in a, a banner listener, um, an activity, uh, your label and server parameter defined on the server, the ad size for the request, um, some ad request parameters, and this extra object that you can pass to your custom event from within your app. Um, the main things to note here are the custom event banner listener. Uh, you will use this to send back uh, notifications from the custom event to the mediation layer to let you know, uh, to tell mediation that you got an ad or you didn't get an ad. Um, so in addition to that request banner ad method, you will take this, you will also implement custom event banner listener. Um, and you're, uh, you'll, you'll take that banner listener and uh, you'll send these messages back uh, depending on how your custom event operates. If you uh, received an ad or you want to show a custom view into your ad space, um, you'll call back with on received ad and pass the view that you want to show. Again, this could be an ad from another network or a custom view of your own. And if you don't want to return an ad, you just call on fail to receive ad. And AdMob mediation will just go to the next network uh, and try to fetch an ad from the next network in your mediation placement. Um, you can also invoke on click when your ad is clicked. This will track clicks in the AdMob mediation reporting. Um, you'll also might want to call on present screen or on dismiss screen uh, if you're ad or custom view launches uh, another screen and the app is no longer in control. Um, and so that's it for implementing custom events. Uh, now we're going to walk through some sample custom events that you can implement. So the first example is percentage house ads. Uh, this example will allow you to request uh, AdMob house ads a percentage of the time. Uh, this is a little bit different than the AdMob house ads network that you can implement with mediation. Uh, a couple of key differences are uh, when, when implementing or when putting custom ads into your mediation placement in the back end, if you define your uh, configuration with ECPM, you might have house ads at the very back of the flow. And if you have other networks that are filling every request, you won't show any house ads. Um, and if you show, if you put house ads as a percentage and do percentage allocation, then you might get house ads you know, a percentage of the time, but then you cannot configure other networks via ECPM. Uh, maybe you have one, one network that, that, is, that pays more per click, and you want to serve them every time that you're not doing your house ads, but because you're doing percentage placement, you don't really have that much control. In addition, uh, AdMob caches the uh, configuration from the server uh, for 300 seconds, so if you if you get house ads first from your percentage order, then you're going to serve house ads uh, for 300 seconds. And depending on what your refresh is, you might get five or six house ads in a row. And you might not want that. Uh, so this percentage house ads custom event gives you a lot of flexibility. Um, you can put it first in your mediation stack with ECPM. And 
the, the app can control like how often it would show that, that house ad or decide to fail. And I'll show you how that happens. So the label for this custom event example is just percentage house ads. Um, the class I'm going to implement is com.google.example.ads.customevents.implementation.percentagehouseads. And I'm passing in two parameters here. Um, since the parameter is going to be a string, I'm actually passing in some JSON. And I'm going to have the app kind of uh, decode that JSON and, and get these values. Uh, it's going to be the publisher ID, which is uh, trafficked to house ads. And you can also set this up in the AdMob UI. And as well as a percentage for how often you want to uh, serve this custom ad, this house ad. Um, and below this, we have the sample uh, eCPM values for trafficking these ads. So in this example I have, I'm going to have house ads uh, valued higher than the AdMob network. So what's going to happen is I'm going to try house ads first. And if that fails, I'm going to go to the AdMob network. So now let's walk through how you might implement this. So our custom class is going to implement the request banner ad method. And we're going to store the banner listener for callbacks later. And the first thing we're going to do is extract these values. I said we, we passed in JSON to that server parameter. Um, and so we're going, to work, we're going to create a new JSON object here and try to get the string publisher ID and the percentage um, from this JSON. If we entered bad JSON or for whatever reason we can't parse it, we'll just uh, log a message and quit. Um, and so this fails gracefully. If this happens, then we just won't ever serve a house ad, and we'll just go on to the AdPub network. So at this point, we'll have our publisher ID as well as our percentage. Um, and we'll construct a random number. And if this random number is higher than the percentage, we won't return the house ad. And if it's less, we will return the house ad. So let's we pick a random number and say it's 53. Um, since 53 is greater than 50, we're just not going to show the house ad. Uh, but if it's less than 50, then we will show the house ad. Um, so similarly, if you had, if you wanted to do house ads, you know, five percent of the time, then if the random number was greater than five, we just wouldn't show the house ad. But if it was less than five, we would. Um, and creating the the house ad is very simple. We just create a new ad view, uh, pass it the activity and the ad size and that publisher ID from the server. Um, we set the ad listener so we can listen for when the house ad comes back, um, and we can send that event back to the mediation layer. Um, and then we'll just load an ad with a new ad request. So, and then in the, the callbacks, uh, we'll, when, we get a, when we get an ad, the house ad from uh, AdMob, we'll set the banner listener and call on receive ad and pass in the ad view. So this tells AdMob Mediation, hey, I have this ad view with my house ad, please show it. If for some reason the request to get the house ad fails, we'll just tell Mediation that we failed to get that ad, um, and it'll move on to the next network. And if we click that ad, uh, we'll call the onClick method so that it gets logged in Mediation reporting. And we'll also call on present screen um, to let the user know that, that we launched a, a view on top. Um, these callbacks are important because uh, you'll, as the user, get them uh, when implementing your app. So this, this custom event code is separate from your normal AdMob declaration. But when you declare your AdMob ad view, you might want to know when you know, the user clicks on an ad and, and presents a new screen, just so you can maybe pause your game. So by having your custom event send this on present screen message, uh, it'll, the mediation layer will then tell you uh, in your main app code that, hey, we're presenting something on the screen. And you need to, you, you know, you can listen for that and then pause your game or something if you need to. So I'm going to run a little bit of a demo here. Um, so I have a couple examples on this app. And the first one here is percentage house ads. So in this example, um, here's this mediation ID that I used, that I have set up already on the server. And in this example, I'm actually overriding what the server has uh, with this own percentage so that I can just demonstrate it for you. So say I put in 50% here and request add. Um, we're, we're noticing that the random number was 47 and it was less than 50. So we're going to get this percentage house add. Um, but if I try it again, uh, 87 this time is going to be greater than 50. So we're going to skip the house ad. And based on the configuration I, I mentioned before, we go to AdMob for an ad. And look, we're getting back an AdMob ad. So this is a great way for every refresh to just check, hey, should I get a custom event or not? Um, and if I change this number to something like 5, maybe you only want to show house ads 5% of the time, um, 
then there you go. The 92 is greater than 5, so we'll skip the house ad. So this is a great way to show house ads a certain percentage of the time. As you notice, on every single request, we're making this check again. So you're not going to get house ads five or six times in a row like you would if you set up um, house ads just via the AdMob house ads network already available within mediation. Um, you'll, you could get a different ad every time, and you could set this percentage however you want. Uh, when you do implement this yourself, you probably will not have um, a percentage input. Again, you'll get that number from the server, and this mediation ID you'll also have set up, and so uh, your app won't need to have these inputs. Um, so the next example is, oh, so, here, so here's just the, the demo again. We uh, request an ad, so sometimes we'll get percentage house ads. The next time uh, we'll get just an ad mob ad. So the next demo I have uh, is for birthday ads. So this is just a simple example that says, uh, hey, if it's your birthday, I'll just show you this birthday image instead of showing you an ad. Maybe if your app um, gets user information and, and knows what the user's birthday is, you might kind of, as a happy birthday thing, say, I'm not going to show you ads today. Um, so we're going to just go through an example of how that works. So this label is just birthday image, um, and our class name is going to be birthday ads. Uh, and in this case, we don't need a server parameter um, just for how the implementation works. So I just passed in unused here. Uh, the app's not actually going to use this parameter. And then for the ad network setup, again, I have the birthday image event. Uh, set at a higher eCPM than the AdMob network, so that we'll try to serve the birthday image first. So let's now walk through the implementation for birthday ads. Um, so one thing you want to do for this example that's a little bit different than the previous example was we're going to have to tell the, the custom event what the user's birthday is. So in your main app code, when you're uh, creating your main ad request, you're going to want to pass in an extra value and this can be done through the custom event extras class. And we're going to pass in the user's birthday. So in this case, we're going to get uh, the birthday from a user input and get the year, month, and day, um, and pass that birthday into the uh, network extras. Uh, something important to note here is, is this extras.add extra line with the custom event label. So when creating custom event extras, um, it's just key value pairs but the key has to be the label of your custom event. So going back to this birthday image, birthday space image, that's going to have to be the key um, to this custom event extras that you add. And so I have it here defined as a constant in my class. And the value is just going to be the birthday. Um, and we're going to set the network extras on the add request. So what this will do is when a custom event comes in um, for birthday image, uh, that, that birthday will get passed in as the custom event extra. And we'll go through that in the next slide. So in our request banner method, request banner add method, um, the last parameter, if you remember from before, is the object custom event extra. And so in this case, our, our class is going to check the custom event extra and try to cast it as the uh, calendar that we passed in. If we, for whatever reason, can't cast it as a calendar or couldn't pass the birthday or couldn't find it, we're just going to fail to receive an ad. And again, we're just going to go to the next ad network and request ad mob. Um, but if we can parse the birthday, then we're going to continue on. And again, if there's uh, some kind of exception, we'll just, we'll just fail. So once we have this birthday, we can then check if, if it actually is their birthday on that day. So we can just get the, uh, the current date with uh, just creating a new Gregorian calendar and just check if the month and the day are the same. And if they are, then it's their birthday, and we'll show them this, this custom birthday ad. Um, so in this case, I have just an image that's static in the app. It's in my resources. And just the example I have happened to be an animated GIF. So in this example, we'll just create a web view and load it with, with this URL from our resources, birthday.gif. Um, and we'll just call unreceived ad with that web view. Um, if it's not your birthday, we'll just, again, fail to receive the ad and just move on to the next network. Um, so this is what the demo looks like. You can enter your birthday here, and if it is your birthday, then it'll show this happy birthday image. And it's not clickable, so the user can't accidentally click it and, and go to a new screen. Um, and if it's not their birthday, then we'll move on to the next network and get an ad mob ad. So we'll try walking through this demo now.
So again, this is the mediation placement ID I already set up on the server. Um, if you wanted to set up your own, then you could change this. Uh, and today happens to be April 29th, so if I request add, uh, I pass this into the user, and it is their birthday, and so we get a happy birthday image. Um, and so maybe in your own implementation, you just wouldn't show an ad at all. You would say, you know, it's your birthday. I'm not going to show you any ads. Enjoy an ad-free day. Uh, but maybe, you know, if we say our birthday is March 29th, which is not today, um, then we'll realize that it's not your birthday. We'll go on the next network, and we'll get the ad mob ad again. So that's a cool little example of how to give somebody a birthday treat and just not show them ads that day and show them this birthday image, and it's just a nice touch. The final example uh, I'm going to show you guys is an in-app purchase example. Uh, this uh, in-app purchase ad uh, will launch a, an in-app billing flow, and so you can actually ask the user to make an in-app purchase. Maybe, uh, do you want to get rid of ads? You know, you can upgrade, make an in-app purchase to, to get something ad-free, and you can show this you know, a certain amount of the time. Um, and so I'm going to walk you through how you can do a custom event to, to invoke an in-app purchase. So in this case, our label is just in-app purchase. Our class name you know, is going to be the in-app purchase class. And we're also not going to need a server parameter for this, so I called it unused. Uh, for my network configuration, I have in-app purchase turned on higher. And in this case, I have AdMob turned off, just so if the in-app purchase doesn't work, then we'll just, we just won't get any ads. So how does this work? Um, in your request banner ad method, the first thing you want to do is try to find out if the user made a test purchase or, or made a purchase. Um, in this case, we're using the, the test purchase of the in-app billing library just kind of as a proof of concept. Um, this made test purchase method is checking the shared preferences. So in this example, um, once we make the in-app purchase, we're just going to store in the shared preferences, uh, hey, I, I made the in-app purchase, so I don't need to do this again, and just don't show ads. So if we've already made the purchase, we're just going to fail to receive the ad, and, and uh, we just won't get any ads. Um, if we haven't, we're going to start the in-app billing flow. So this, this example is largely taken from the Trivial Drive example provided with the Google in-app billing library version 3. Um, and it has all these helper classes. So we're going to create an in-app billing helper, uh, pass in the activity and our, our public key. Uh, the public key can be anything. Uh, if you're just doing the test purchase, it doesn't have to be an actual value. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is, is set it up, uh, start it up, and it, when it, the setup finishes, um, if this su setup succeeds, then we can move on. Otherwise, we'll just fail to get the ad. Um, and after it sets up, we'll want to query the inventory to see how we made the purchase already. So sometimes you might have made the purchase, but not have like stored that you actually made it yet. You might not have like consumed it. Um, so this checks for the case where we actually made the purchase but didn't consume it yet. Um, while the made purchase check, made test purchase check at the top checks if we already consumed it. Um, so in querying the inventory, uh, if the inventory query fails, again, we'll fail to return an ad because we don't know if the user made a test purchase or not. Um, otherwise, we check if the purchase was made but not consumed. So once we get this inventory result, We'll check for the test successful purchase uh, SKU. Um, and we have that test, pur test purchase inventory if the test purchase is not null. And uh, we verified that, that this is actually a valid purchase. Uh, again, when you're doing in-app billing yourself, you're actually going to want to verify that the, the payload is valid so that uh, nobody can like hack the in-app purchase. Uh, if you've already made this uh, test purchase, then we're going to consume it. And once we consume it, we'll just fail to return an ad because we've, we've already made the purchase. Otherwise, we're going to uh, get the ad. We're going to create the in-app purchase ad and call on received ad. So I'm going to walk through uh, how we create it. So I just want to go back to the point that custom events only take in a view. It doesn't necessarily have to be an ad. So in this case, our ad is just going to be a, a view. So I'm just creating a relative layout here uh, with a button on the right side that says Upgrade um, and some text that's, that says, do you want to upgrade? Um, so here I'm showing how we're going to add the Purchase button. And when it's, when it's clicked, we're going to start launching the Purchase Flow, IAB Helper .launch purchase flow, uh, with that purchase. 
Uh, so I didn't show you all the code here, um, but we'll have a, a sample app kind of demonstrating this, and we can walk through it more. But here's kind of how the demo works. Um, again, we have our mediation placement ID up top that I set up, and you can request an ad. And if you haven't made the in-app purchase yet, you'll get this view at the bottom, and this is in the same ad space. And it says, you want to remove ads? If so, upgrade. And if you click the upgrade button, you'll make this sample purchase. Um, again, if you want to actually do in-app billing, you're going to want to uh, go to the Android console and, and set up your in-app billing um, SKUs. But for this sample, we can just uh, we can use the sample SKU. And if you make this payment, then the next time you request the ad, we can check, oh, the purchase was already made. We don't need to show the ad. And we just won't show an ad. Uh, so I can't give you a demo on the simulator here because it doesn't have in-app billing enabled. Uh, but I can walk through some more of the code here. Um, so here's uh, the full create in-app purchase. We're actually creating a text view that says, do you want to remove ads? Um, and that's going to go on the left side. And the button upgrade is going to go on the right side with this on-click listener. And this is done over here. Um, Here's our query inventory finished. We saw this on a slide as well. Um, if the result failed, then we're just going to fail to return an ad. Um, otherwise, we check if we made this purchase. And if we have, we're going to consume it. Um, something I didn't put in the slides is once the purchase is finished and we verified that, that the purchase is valid, um, then we're just going to save the test purchase, which is just going to put it in shared preferences. Um, and then we're going to consume it. Um, the main reason that we're consuming it is just for the sample to be able to clear the purchase and be able to purchase it again. If you want to make it um, like an infinite thing where you don't ever consume it, then you can just not consume and then your custom event um, can just query the inventory and if it's there, it, it knows it doesn't need to show an ad. Uh, the consuming part was just for the demo purposes. Um, and finally, when we've consumed it, um, again, we're going to save the test purchase. And we're just going to fail to return an ad because we just consumed it. We just made the purchase. Um, we don't need to have an ad anymore. Um, again, you're going to want to verify that the payload is, is valid when you do it yourself. But in this case, we're just always assuming it's true. And here are just a couple wrappers for checking if they made the test purchase. Again, we're just checking shared preferences. Um, and saving the test per. Saving the test purchase is also just done with shared preferences. Uh, we're going to put the Boolean in and, and commit it. Um, also remember that we need to implement the destroy method uh, when doing a custom event. Um, it doesn't really need to do much. In this case, we're just setting the activity passed to us to null so that we don't have any, any memory leaks. Um, so these are all the demos I have. Um, again. Custom events are very powerful. You've seen a couple examples here of what they can do. Um, you can also integrate just the, the standard example would just be integrate some other ad network um, and just return another ad network's view uh, within that custom event, uh, maybe for a network that's not supported uh, with for, for AdMob directly with an AdMob mediation adapter. Um, some resources here are the custom event sample project will be available on our Google Code project, uh, google-mobile-dev. Um, our, you can download our SDK uh, from our mobile ads SDK, developer docs, um, google.com slash ads slash admob is where you can uh, set up your admob mediation placements. Um, to learn more about custom events, we actually have a, a class on it, and you can learn just more about how custom events work with the APIs. Um, we also have our developer docs, um, our forum, our Google Plus page, uh, and our blog where you can just find out a lot more information about admob. And if you have any questions, you can ask us on our developer forums. So I hope you guys learned a lot more about custom events today and have some cool ideas about how you can implement them in your app. Uh, thanks for watching.